My name is Anna, and I'm the second generation farmer on Newbury Farm, which was founded by my parents in 1985. On the farm, we produce apples, pears, strawberries, blueberries, and vegetables. Today, I'm going to talk about the dirty truth of growing a garden for the best production. I'm also going to walk you through how to plant your garden to get the best yield and maintain a pest and fungus free garden by companion planting. Let's start with the planning process. You can't have a productive garden without planning with pen and paper first. There are several things you need to think about before you start planning your garden. The first thing to think about is how big of an area you have to plant your garden. How big of a space you have will depend on what types of plants you can plant. The next thing you have to decide is whether you're going to have raised beds. Raised beds are planting the garden above the existing soil or you're going to plant in the ground or even possibly do a combination of both. Since our garden is about a half an acre and grows a variety of vegetables, we do a combination of both raised beds and directly in the ground planting. Raised beds are good for root vegetables like carrots, beets, radishes, and potatoes. This is because they require a softer, more aerated soil so they can easily grow into the ground. It's easier to control the density of the soil in raised beds. The easiest way to do this is to add peat moss to the soil. After you decide if you're going to plant in the ground or in raised beds, and how much space you have, it's time to figure out which plants you're going to be planting. To keep this video short, we have chosen to talk about the most popular vegetables grown by hobby farmers. Tomatoes, peppers, green beans, cucumbers, onions, lettuce, zucchini and squash, and radishes. Yeah. The first thing to consider is what type of fence you want around your garden. Just about every plant eating animal loves a free meal out of your lush garden. And the last thing you want is to go harvest your vegetables after you've worked so hard for them for some animal that got to them before you did. The easiest way to protect your garden from animal pests such as deer, rabbits, woodchuck, squirrel, and chipmunk is by a fence around your garden. Two of the most common types of fences for vegetable gardens are electric fence and box wire fence. Electric fencing can be a challenge to maintain because it needs to be free of weeds that could short out the fencing and cause it to stop working. You will need to weed whack under the fence at least once a week. Electric fencing also requires a source of power with a fence charger. If you have electricity close to your garden, you can easily plug in your charger. However, if your garden is not located near an outlet, you will need to buy a solar fence charger that's powered by the sun. At our farm, we use box fencing. We chose this type of fencing because we grow blackberries, raspberries, and black raspberries up our fencing. Using our fence as a trellis, it also creates a visual barrier for our animals to discourage them from trying to find a weak spot in the fencing. It's easier to maintain since we don't rely on electricity to keep our fence working. Deer are really high jumpers and will jump up to six feet high to get into your garden. To ensure your fencing is high enough to keep the deer out, I would recommend at least an eight foot fence. So now that we have our plants planned out, and our fencing situated, it's time to start planning where to put our plants. This is where companion planting comes into play. Companion planting is using your plants as natural pests and fungus control. Companion planting also is a great way to maximize the efficiency of your garden. For just about every vegetable you grow, there's likely a beneficial companion plant that will help with soil nutrients, chase away pests, and provide other benefits. The first vegetable we're going to cover is the tomato. Tomatoes and basil were made to go together, not only in sauce, but in the garden too. 
Basil helps tomatoes produce a larger yield and it repels both flies and mosquitoes. Marigolds can be used to repel nematodes and other garden pests. However, with every friend, there is also an enemy. You need to keep your tomatoes away from corn because they are both affected by the same blight and it can easily be spread from plant to plant. Blight is a common fungal disease that affects tomatoes that can destroy an entire crop. Blight spreads by fungal spores that are carried by insects, wind, water, and other animals from inf infected plants, and then deposited on soil. The disease requires moisture to progress, so when dew or rain comes into contact with fungal spores in the soil, they reproduce. When it rains, water hits the ground, splashing the soil and spores onto the lower leaves of the plant. If you notice blight, remove all affected leaves and burn them or place them in the garbage. Mulch around the base of the plant with straw, wood chips, or other natural mulch to prevent fungal spores from being able to splash onto the plant. If blight has already spread to more than just a few plants, you'll need to apply fungicide, which kills fungal spores and keeps blight from causing further damage. Next to the tomatoes and the basil, you can work in your peppers. Peppers are also affected by aphids, and like the tomatoes, the basil will keep the aphids away from your peppers. Some people claim that basil also improves the pepper's flavor. You'll need to keep your peppers away from your beans because beans have long vines and it will strangle your pepper plants. Blossom end rot is a physiological disorder, not an infectious disease, that commonly occurs on peppers. Initial symptoms of the disorder are dark green or brown water-soaked indents occurring on the bottom of the fruit. Blossom and rot results from a calcium deficiency in young, rapidly expanding peppers. Despite the name, it's not actually a bacterial rot, but rather a result of the plant's inability to produce healthy skin on the fruit. One way to prevent blossom end rot is to stop it before it starts, mixing eggshells into your soil before planting. However, if you happen to see blossom end rot, it's important to stop, stop it as soon as possible. You can add lime into your soil or buy a topical spray called Rot Stop to quickly add calcium to your plants. Speaking of beans, if you choose to grow corn, you'll want to grow your beans with your corn. Since corn grows really tall and thick stalks, it will provide a natural trellis for the beans to grow up. If you choose not to grow corn, you'll need to provide the beans a trellis to grow up or they'll take over your garden, strangling the plants next to them. Even when trellised, beans cannot grow near beets or anything in the onion family. Onions in particular disrupt the growth of the plants. Sometimes flowering plants are not just for their beautiful looks and great smells. Marigolds and nasturtiums repel aphids and beetles from cucumbers. Cucumber beetles are one of the most common pests that attack the cucumber plant. The second most common problem farmers face with cucumbers is powdery mildew. Powdery mildew attacks the leaves of the plant and it looks like someone sprinkled baby powder all over the leaves. Powdery mildew limits the growth of the cucumber. A fungicide will easily stop the spread of powdery mildew. However, if you would like to keep your garden more natural, I would recommend spraying your plants with a milk and water solution. It is recommended to use 40% milk and 60% water. Scientists are not exactly sure how milk sprays work, but most think proteins in the milk interact with the sun to create a brief antiseptic effect. Keep cucumbers away from aromic herbs like sage. These herbs will stunt the growth of your cucumbers. Carrots should always be planted next to your onions because the onions will repel carrot flies. 
Onions also chase away aphids, so planting them next to your aphid-prone veggies is always a good thing to consider. Avoid planting your carrots with dill, parsnip, and potatoes. Generally speaking, it's a good idea to keep some space between root crops so they don't compete for available phosphorus. Carrots planted near tomatoes may also have stunted roots, but they will have exceptional flavor. Carrots are also very heat sensitive, so when they are planted near the tomatoes, the tomatoes will provide the carrots with a little bit of shade. Leeks and carrots are also great friends since leeks repel fly, carrot flies and carrots repel leek moths and onion flies. Coriander and dill cannot be planted near carrots. Both of these herbs produce a compound that can be harmful to the carrot plant. Lettuce is one of the most common vegetables planted in gardens. It's also one of the first things available for harvest in the spring. You should plant mint next to your lettuce to keep the slugs away that feed off the lettuce leaves. Also plant chives and garlic around your lettuce to repel aphids. Lastly, marigolds planted around your lettuce will help keep other bugs out of your lettuce. Plant your radishes among your cucumbers to attract the cucumber beetles away from your cukes. Radishes also work well with carrots as they have harvested before the carrots and they loosen the soil for the carrots. It's said that planting three or four icicle radishes around the mounds where you plant your squash is allowing them to grow and bloom will prevent the pests from the squash and cucumbers. The trick to using radishes as companion crops is to pay careful attention to their growth, not just the companion crop growth. For instance, when planting radishes with lettuce or spinach, be sure to check among those growing green leaves for ones that are radishes and pull them out as they mature. That will leave room for the lettuce and spinach to spread out and get bigger. Now that we know where to put our plants, it's time to start getting your hands dirty and planting your garden. And remember, always have fun. Growing a garden is fun and challenging all at the same time, but these simple tips should help ease the stress of pest and disease control. Happy gardening!